We're going to talk about calibration, but before we talk about actually how to calibrate equipment, we're going to look at how herbicides are formulated. Now, there's four basic types of ways in which an herbicide can be formulated. As a water-soluble, as an emulsifiable concentrate, as a dry flowable, or as a granular. And we're going to look at the advantages and disadvantages of all of these different types of formulations. Now, formulations are important because they can dictate when you should use an herbicide, how you should use it. The wrong formulation may create a problem in a particular situation, or it may compromise your ability to control the weeds. My colleague Guy Kaiser uh, is going to demonstrate, first, water-soluble formulations. Hi. Now I'm wearing purple gloves and a white suit, not as a fashion statement, but because we're going to be working with concentrated herbicides today. Uh, now the mixing and loading phase of an herbicide application is the most dangerous part of the application because you're working with undiluted materials, um, pouring them from a bottle into some other container. Uh, and so you need to be wearing waterproof, preferably chemical resistant gloves, uh, some kind of uh, water chemical resistant uh, overalls, rubber boots, and eye protection. The first thing we're going to look at is water-soluble formulations uh, like this uh, habitat, which is a formulation of the chemical lamazepir. Uh, most of the chemicals registered for use in, or in and around um, aquatic environments are water-soluble because uh, water-soluble formulations don't have the, uh, the solvents that, uh, that you need for uh, some of the ester and oil-based herbicides. So in, in addition to uh, aquatic herbicides, there are many other herbicides used in natural areas that are water-soluble. Roundup is an example of, an, of another one, as well as Milestone, which is aminoperilin, and Transline, which is chlorperilin. Now, the advantage of water-soluble herbicides is that they're very easy to mix because they just go into solution with a water carrier. The disadvantage is that oftentimes they're not taken up by the cuticle of leaves nearly as well as a more oil-based herbicide. Here we are, some nice blue water-soluble herbicide. And one of the distinguishing features of a water-soluble herbicide is that it doesn't form a milky emulsion when you add water. The second formulation is an emulsifiable concentrate. A good example of a home product that's an emulsifiable concentrate is milk. So an emulsifiable concentrate is a product that is actually more soluble in oil than it is in water. And you can formulate an herbicide to be like that. Now there are disadvantages and advantages to an emulsifiable concentrate. The main advantage is that because it's lipophilic or fat loving, it can move through the cuticle of a plant or the, the leaf surface of the plant much better than a water soluble herbicide. And therefore you can actually get better activity. The disadvantage of an emulsifiable concentrate is that they tend to be more volatile, whereas water-soluble compounds tend to be very low in volatilization. So a volatile herbicide might move off-site a lot more than uh, a water-soluble compound. So it's typically recommended with a lot of our emulsifiable concentrates that, they don't, uh, that you don't treat them when temperatures get above 80 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so now we're going to look at an emulsifiable concentrate herbicide. This is a chemical called Fusilade. Uh, the, uh, the chemical name, the product is Fusilade, and the chemical name is Fluizafop. And this is a chemical which is formulated specifically to kill grasses, and it won't kill broadleaf plants. The um, emulsifiable concentrates tend to have uh, volatile solvents in them, and so they tend to be the stinkier besides. That goes along with the, uh, the volatility that Joe was talking about. And here's another distinguishing characteristic of an emulsifiable concentrate is when you add the water, it forms this milky emulsion. And that's what the uh, emulsifiable concentrate term uh, means. There are some herbicides that can be formulated both as a water soluble and as an ester or an emulsifiable concentrate. For example, herbicides like 2,4-D, triclopyr, and amazapyr can be formulated both ways depending upon the situation. So for, for example, if you know Garlon, you'll know there's Garlon 3A, which is a water-soluble formulation, and there's also Garlon 4, which, which is an emulsifiable concentrate, or what we often refer to as an ester formulation. And one will be used in a certain situation, and the other will be used in a different situation. The third type of formulation is a solid called a dry flowable. 
Now, this, this formulation used to be called wettable powders, but they were so light and dusty that when you mixed them, they blew off into the wind. So now they've made them into more pellets, which are much easier to, to mix and don't create the environmental problems. Now, these are herbicides that are not very soluble in water, and they're not very soluble in oil. So they're mixed with a clay or other talc or other type of material and formulated that way uh, for mixing in water. So I've poured out a little bit of the product Tellar, uh, the chemical name is chlorosulfuron, into this cup. And you can see that it's a, uh, a granular dry product. And we're going to add a little bit of water to it so you can see what happens then. It can actually take a few minutes to dissolve. And it's very important uh, when using uh, a dry flowable chemical like this that you have some kind of agitation in your tank. Um, if you're applying by hand, usually just the motion of, of uh, stepping and walking around the hills will uh, agitate it enough to keep the herbicide in solution. Uh, the fourth type of herbicide application is a granule. Uh, larger pelleted formulations um, that Guy is going to discuss. This is a chemical, uh, the formulation is, is trademarked uh, pronone, and the chemical name is hexazinone. Uh, these are really big pieces, really big pellets, a lot, uh, a lot bigger than the, uh, the dry flowables we were looking at earlier. And uh, the effect of that is that these are heavy, and they can be applied by air, and they'll fall straight to the ground without, uh, without drifting away at all. Uh, you can also use them for targeted applications, uh, for example, spreading it right around the base of a... Of a an invasive tree. There are herbicides that are registered for both aquatic use and also terrestrial use. Typically, they're formulated differently for the two. The best example of this is Roundup, which is formulated for wildland or terrestrial use, and Rodeo or Aquamaster, which is formulated for aquatic use. Now, the difference between those two formulations is that Rodeo or Aquamaster, the aquatic herbicide, does not have a surfactant within that formulation, whereas Roundup does. So you have to add a surfactant in order to make that herbicide work effectively. <laughs> and when you add a surfactant, it has to be an aquatic registered surfactant. For example, R11, which is demonstrated here, as well as something like Competitor and others, are aquatic registered surfactants. And they have to be added to the formulation in order to get effective control of emergent aquatic weeds. So to summarize this section, water-soluble formulations go into solution easy, but when applied post-emergence, typically need a surfactant. Emulsifiable concentrates, which are also known as esters, give better uptake into the foliage and also the stems, but they form a cloudy solution and have more odor. They're also volatile, and so they can create problems in too high a temperatures, and they cannot be used near water. Dry flowables do not go into either water or oils well and so have to be formulated with a solid and they require agitation to keep the solution uniform. Granular or pelleted formulations can be applied directly to the target area with or without mixing in water. When mixed in water it is much like a dry flowable and they have a reduced risk of off-site movement in wind.